Hey, hello, you're stuck in Travel Wolf Core, like a few minutes riffing on IT and IT security. Today, looking at uh, Memcache as it applies to denial of service attacks. Now, obviously, this is a daily video in a car, usually in traffic, so undoubtedly, at some point in time in the week, someone's going to make a joke about, oh, what about network traffic? You know, are you ever stuck in that? And of course, a lot of people ask about denial of service attacks. It's hard to plan for. You know, it's hard to prepare for. It's hard to build up defenses. Um, I don't know too many organizations who will do a penetration test where they'll blast you with a terabyte of data. And a terabyte of data a second may seem unrealistic, but we just saw a couple days ago GitHub get hit by 1.5 terabytes a second. Who survives that? <laughs> no one does. No one does. Uh, and GitHub was hit by um, a reflection attack using Memcache. So the tip for you is this. Uh, a, check out Memcache and, and how it's used. It's an interesting attack. But B, just as importantly, if you have a Memcache environment, uh, please, please review how to secure it. Uh, because so oftentimes these types of attacks, these reflection attacks, are predicated on people on the internet not necessarily taking care of their own environment. It's predicated on people setting up things and forgetting it, right? Set and forget and go. Uh, we used to see this all the time with NTP servers being used for denial of service attacks or DNS servers being used for denial of service attacks. Uh, you stand up a, a out of the box configuration, you don't lock it down, and now what you've done is introduce risk not necessarily to your own organization, but also to the wider internet community. And that's exactly what we're seeing with Memcache. If organizations deployed Memcache with default settings and have it open to everyone else, um, there can be this particular type of attack. Now Memcache is used, as the name says in the box, <laughs> for memory caching specifically for websites. This is a way to make websites faster. Uh, Memcache is generally restricted only to the sites that, that use it. Now there's a way to send a UDP packet to a memcache server and it sends back a response. Now, that type of attack, reflection attack, is how a lot of these denial of services happen. I send you a UDP packet and you send 5, 10, 15 um, back to, to me. Now I spoof my IP address, I send you a UDP packet, you send 5, 10, 15 to my target, right? That's the amplification side. And now on NTP, maybe like an application of 500, right? I send you one packet, you send them 500. That amplification factor is important because if you really want to pump up those numbers, those are rookie numbers, sorry. If you really want to pump up those numbers, uh, you need a high level amplification. Otherwise, you might just use a botnet and hit them directly. So, if NTPs are on 500, I've heard numbers for memcache ranging from anywhere from 10,000 to 50,000. It's a very large amount of packets that get sent back on this one request. And of course, there are UDP packets. So, the way this works is you identify as an attacker, several memcache servers, maybe a thousand. You use your own environment to send several packets to them, maybe a little botnet or something small, and then they send back for every one packet, you know, 10 to 50,000 packets to your uh, target. And that's how you end up hitting GitHub with one and a half terabytes a second to now service. Ultimately, ultimately, we need to make sure when we're standing up these environments, memcache, NTP, DNS, whatever it is, that we're thinking about our neighbors and being a good neighbor and putting them up in a secure place. So please do check, please do um, you know research the hardening guidelines and, and lock your environment down. What do you think? Have you seen these types of attacks? in your own environment. What do you think is the next big thing? Comment, social media, hit me up.